And good afternoon, I'm Dr. Ara Dukmajan. We're broadcasting live spine surgery from the Duke Spine Institute Surgery Center Vier on February 21, 2023. This patient has a herniated disc in the thoracic spine. Not a common problem, but she's having an ice pick sensation, like she has an ice pick at T67. Highly localized pain, herniation at T67. This happened um, related to a work injury and she's tried conservative treatment with shots, meds, therapy, it doesn't work. The MRI shows a herniation at T67. <clears throat> you can see screws as well at T11 and down. She's had a major fusion, not by me, uh, but by somebody else, a little heavy handed with the metal. We're here today to do the Duke laser disc repair, thoracic T67. And it's the left approach because the pain radiates around her left rib. All right, we're gonna get started. If you have questions, feel free to type them up. Otherwise, I'll walk you through the surgery. We've already numbed up the skin and I'm gonna approach the thoracic spine through a, with a spinal needle. I'm placing it at posteriorly and I'm gonna go through the uh, foramen shot at T67. All right, good. So we've got 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So I'm a little higher than I should be. I need to be a little bit lower. Shot. All right, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 7. I'm already hitting the facet. Shot. Let's go to a lateral view. So when we go to a lateral view, you'll see what I'm doing is placing a needle. That needle is going to go from the back through the neural foramen. All right. Huh? Just 11, 10, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 7. Try to line those end plates up. So what I'm hitting, folks, is the facet joint. A little bit orbit the other way. Good job. Take your time, Jordan. We got plenty of time. Eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Shot. All right, you need to move the whole machine further north, as a little bit more north, and shot. And then we got to wag it into place. I think your wag is not horrible, but your orbit is off by about a degree and a half to two degrees. Give me some orbital change. That's not bad. Still off on orbit. Um, I think you made it worse. Let's try the other way, maybe. That's better. That's really good right there. That's really good. All right. So I've got to get down to that T67 disc. We're a bit overexposed. Yes, yes. Nice. Actually, it's feeling pretty good. Shot. Uh huh. She is awake for this procedure. Yes? Oh yeah. But not 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 like wide awake, but enough to be responsive. AP? Sorry. My bad. I didn't need her awake for a discogram, but I need her awake okay. enough to tell us how she's doing. Uh, this, I'll do it. All right, so we're using a combination of AP lateral fluoroscopy to navigate down. Oh, that looks perfect. Can you give us a better picture? Because I may use this for one of my talks. I'd just like to make sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You see that, Henry? So, Jordan, yes, I do. go ahead and count the bones. From, we know the top screw from her prior surgery is 11, 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six. The disc herniation we're dealing with is left C6, seven. Show the tip of the needle. Yes, it's perfect. You can see the lung fields. There's no pneumothorax. The lungs are fully inflated. So, so far so good. And let's go back to a lateral view. I'm very happy with where we are. It's very, very nice. We're nowhere near the spinal cord. We're getting close. So we've confirmed that we're at the right level. The positioning of the needle looks excellent. And again, we're going to fix a thoracic disc herniation, something that no other surgeon will treat because it's too risky to do with open surgery. They have to take the rib out. They have to do crazy things. We call it lateral extracavitary surgery, which you don't want to do on somebody, um, not for back pain. Shot? Try to give me a, better, a little bit better exposure. It's just overexposed. Shot? Looking good. We're right at the back of the disc. You can actually feel the herniation. I'm advancing the needle a little bit at a time. Huh. Hmm? We're in, in like Flynn. You know, we might as well do a discogram. You think she's awake enough? All right, look at that folks, beautiful. So let's show the entry point of the needle on the lateral x-ray. Where does it enter the skin? Show where it enters the skin. So the needle enters there. Show the path of the needle, good. Passing the facet, passing the spinal cord, there it is, entering the disc. All right, are you comfortable? Huh? No problem, we got plenty of time. So let me show our audience, how long has she had thoracic pain? This is. Yeah, let's switch the lights so we can. Um, she's had pain since uh, June 2nd, 2022. So June of 2022. So what, seven, eight months? Uh, 2022 yeah. to yeah. Pain for eight months. Her pain, when I asked her, where is your pain on exam? She showed me it was right here. So I looked at her MRI and guess what was right there? She had a herniated disc. And that's. T six seven. T for thoracic, six seven. That's the number six and seven bone disc, the disc between the numbers six and seven. All right. So we talked about fixing it, and she decided she wanted to fix because she had tried other treatments, they all didn't work. Therapy, shots, meds, none of those work for thoracic disc herniations. So you're watching history. I think this is our 17th thoracic uh, Duke laser disc repair we've ever done. She's lost basically, that's one drop of blood. We actually lost two or three drops total. I think we have a total of three drops. Yeah. Three drops of blood. This is basically bloodless surgery. All right, is she all right? Still sleeping? No worries. It's my fault. I told you I wanted her asleep and um, you did what you're supposed to do. But now that she's asleep, I want her awake. <laughs> Don't you know that's what surgeons do, Dr. Byrne does? You know, we t it's do the opposite of what we tell you. Let's get an AP view and give her another minute. And you know, what you're gonna see, We're gonna check the position of the needle tip relative to the middle of the disc. Remember, this is a transforaminal surgery. I remember the first time I sneezed in an operating room. I thought, oh my God, am I allowed to sneeze in here? All right, let's get a shot. Oh, perfect. Look at that, folks. Show them the needle. Show them the middle of the spine. You can see the tip of the spine is processed right there, and the needle goes right to the middle. It's absolute perfect placement, uh, transforaminal.
Are you awake? All right. How far out is she? So I'm going to do what's called a discogram. Normally we want to see if she feels the pain when we do it, but we're going to do it anyway. Shaw? Hi, how are you? All right. So, so let's see that tear. You can see a tear in the front. That's not causing her pain. And you can see a tear in the back, but the needle is overshadowing it. That there's dye now in the epidural space. Yep, and that dye got there through a tear in the back. So there must be a tear in the back of the disc. Yeah. I'm going to give her another minute. We're going to see if, if um, we can get her a little more awake. And I'm going to test. Turn that off for a second. This is Dr. Duke Majin. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? How you doing? Lay still. Don't try to get up. Can you hear me? My friend, can you open your eyes for me? Can you open? Lay Good. still. Lay still. <laughs> yeah. But is she reliable? Yeah. All right. What's your name? Don't don't tell me the answer, but I just want to make sure the brain is computing properly. Hey, are you awake? Hi, are you awake? Yeah. Yes. All right, good. Are you having any pain? Are you having any pain? Are you having any pain, my friend? Are you having any pain in your upper back? Hello, can you open your eyes? Are you having any pain? Any pain? No, all right. No. All right, lay still, okay? Can you hear me? She's almost there. She's almost there. She's a little groggy still, but we're going to give her one more minute since we're so close. Lay still. Don't get up. No. Okay. Don't so get up. Question now, right? Can you hear me? Can you hear Dr. Duke? Yes or no? Hello? Can you hear Dr. Duke? Does she wear hearing implants? Yes. She does. No. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Lay still. Don't get up. Don't get up. Lay still. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? You got to stop trying to get off the table. Lay down. Don't move your body. Just answer me. Can you hear me? All right. So I want you to answer me if you can hear me. Can you hear me? She's still somnolent. All right, stop moving and picking your body up. Do you hear me say that? She's picking her body up again. So, again, I, I don't think she's all there. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear Dr. Duke? Yes. Stop picking your body up. Keep your head down, please. Head down. Head down. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, don't pick your body up. I'm actually looking to see if you're picking your body up. If you pick your body up, it means you're not there. Can you hear me? Yes. Don't pick your body up. All right, are you having any pain? Any pain? No. No? All right, good. All right, well, let's see if that changes. How bad is that? How bad is that on a scale of zero, zero to ten? How bad is that? Eight? Is that, was that, what's the highest it went? What's the highest? Uh, I wish I didn't know. 
What's the highest it goes? What's the highest it went? 13. 13. 13? Yeah. Is that where you get your back pain typically? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we got our answer. She said 13 out of 10 was the highest it went. You get to go to sleep. When you wake up, we'll, we'll be done and that pain will be gone. So, yeah. folks, I don't know why, why this pen is garbage. Yeah, it's just that, not. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why. All right, so anyway, Henry, can you hear me? Yes. She has a 13 out of 10 pain. And the pain, see how it's disappearing? It's going to disappear with our surgery. Hey, lay still. Don't get up. You're doing great. Don't move. All right. So at this point, we've confirmed that she has pain at that disc, T67, that there's a tear in the back of the disc, that's where the pain's coming from, and that, that's her typical pain. We call it concordant, concordant. It's just a funny medical term. Lay still, don't get up, lay still. Hey, you had her nicely asleep. All right, make an incision. That's a four millimeter incision. We're gonna fix this entire disc herniation with that tiny little cut. X-ray yeah. shot. There's the guide wire. You can see it sitting in the disc. I'm going to pull this shot. All right, I'm going to pull this needle out. It's really tight. Shot. You guys see the guide wire? Show them the guide wire in the disc. Careful not to pull your guide wire out. There you go. You see that, Henry? Yes, we do. All right, now we're gonna bring this dilator. Check this out, folks. See this? Let me have the tube. So this whole surgery is gonna be done and repair the thoracic herniation. It's gonna be done with this tube. This is four millimeters wide. This dilator is about three millimeters, 2.8 millimeters wide, maybe three millimeters. And we're gonna place the dilator first, which is gonna spread the muscle fibers open and then we're gonna bring the tube down on top of the dilator and the tube will go in, we'll take the dilator out. All right, any questions? No current questions. Let's show the video as to how does a herniated disc um, cause back pain. Use the lumbar one. Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. All right, folks. So let's get a shot. At this point, we've accessed the disc that we're interested in fixing, transferminal left approach. Let's get an AP so they can see the trajectory. Once again, this is the first place in the world doing this surgery, Duke Spine Institute. There is nobody in the world that's done endoscopic transferminal surgery There's been endoscopic cervical and lumbar surgery. There's a transthoracic endoscopic, but endoscopic transferaminal, we're the first to do. And you can see 
where we're approaching this problem from. All right, let's go ahead and go back to a lateral view. We're gonna bring our tube down the dilator. You're doing great, lay still. Shot. All right, hold on. So the tube is almost to the back of the disc. Oh yeah, shot. Mm -hmm. Shot. Again, we're coming transforaminal. Everything okay, guys? All right. Let me see. Shot. All right, so the tube is almost to the back of the disc. Let's get her a little bit deeper, if you can. Hold it. Shot. That's good. Shot. All right, so you can see we're done. The tube retractor is inside the disc. Specifically, it's in the annular tear. Um, and now we're gonna remove the, the dilator. Shot. All right, you guys see that? So at this point, show them where the, the tube is. And Jordan, move us down to T11 so we can see just the top of T11, just to show the levels. Perfect. So there's 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We are at T67. That's our target for endoscopic surgery. All right, you can bring the fluoro out. At this point, we're going to bring the endoscope in and we're going to finish the surgery endoscopically with a laser. This is called the Duke Laser Disc Repair. It's done endoscopically. This is, uh, of course, our patient. This patient goes home in about an hour from now. All right. Lay still. Questions from our audience? No current questions. All right, well, let's show our audience how the Duke Laser Disc Repair actually works. Let's do the lumbar one while I get started. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. All right, welcome back. You're looking down the endoscopic tube and the endoscope. You see what I see, which is the herniation sitting right in front of us and I'm using the laser to remove it. The inner diameter of this tube is about oh uh, 2.8 millimeters. Um, this is not as nice of a view as lumbar. Lumbar is definitely better. The reason is this is a fiber optic scope. The lumbar is a rod lens. There's a herniation right there. You guys see the blue? Everything blue is degenerated nucleus propulsus. It's the bad stuff. Okay. That's what we want to remove. 
and we're working inside the annular tear, debriding the tear so that it will heal on its own, get rid of the pain. Wow, this disc is pretty badly damaged. All the blue stuff that keeps popping out right there is all degenerated nucleus. This is what's causing her pain. Look at the tear right there. You guys see the tear at 12 o'clock? The annular tear, yep. Yes, we do. And we're cleaning the tear with the laser. This is how you get rid of the pain. Again, this was discovered at Duke Spine Institute, the first in the world to pioneer this technology. And we've been curing back and neck pain for years. We have our, uh, our web team here who's helping me build a new website of 2023. It'll be launched in 2023. This is our best website we've ever had. We've gone through many versions at Duke Spine. Um, and over the years, the websites have gotten better and better. This is, this is gonna be the website of all websites for us. It's gonna have a lot of great information, be very interactive. It's gonna be um, great hierarchy and content. Taking a bit of a minimalistic approach, but still having that information and everything available. So I'm excited. We're getting close to launching. And as soon as I get done with this fifth surgery of the day, I'll be working with the web team to, uh, to get ready to launch our, our next website. All right, uh, any questions from the audience? No current questions. Great. Just about done, five minutes, doctor, five minutes. This is, uh, we're pulling backwards a little bit. You can see the herniation here. We're still overexposed on the camera, maybe a little bit down on the light source. One more click. One more picture. <laughs> the light is not uh, on the top. Yeah. Uh, let me see. That's probably good. Got just a few minutes left on this. You can see how quick and nice the surgery is. Doesn't require removing the rib. It doesn't require major surgery. Doesn't require fusion. Doesn't require metal or biologics at this time. There's no, nothing. It's just natural surgery. Oh, so I'm being told by the nurses that this patient had nine fusions for her, her back before she got to me. It's so sad, each one, one at a time. It's just disgusting. How's the irrigation, good? All right, so here we are. We're gonna fix her thoracic problem with one surgery. And this should last the rest of her life. Just about done. That, see the herniation? It just Every time I pull the tube back a little bit, you get to see a little more of it. And remember the laser fiber you're seeing down there, that's one millimeter wide. So it gives you an idea of just how small of a space we're working in. grab her. This irrigation is weak. That's a little bit. Yeah. That's your laser. Come on.
That's not great. See, the blood is starting to clog the field. What's the problem with the irrigation? Are they just almost empty or not? I mean, it's hard to believe we haven't used that much irrigation. Well, there's a block in the line somewhere. You got to find it. Are you? Uh, I, I can't. I haven't checked. I have to check. Let me tell you in a second. <laughs> the coldness is fine. It's just look at the debris is not coming up fast, it's barely moving. I don't think it's the bag. It's look at that. There's no Wait. pressure. And that that's it's weak. It's not at 700 psi. That's for sure. Do you switch to the, uh, the, the, the other one though? Did you switch? No. Yeah. Okay. Just about done. Do you want me to check another bag or no? No, we're we're done. I think, uh, unless the bag is empty right now. Then there's just, for some, something's wrong with the machine then. No, it's not, I don't know, it, it, there's something wrong with the machine. Then you got the wrong machine cranked up. Oh, I don't know. Whatever's cranked up is not the irrigation pressure machine. Okay, just about done here. This is the last of the herniation. I'm almost at the end. We've cleaned it all out. The annular tear has been cleaned out. I feel irrig... Oh, now it's squirting like crazy. Oh my yeah, whatever you did, it... it? Holy mackerel. It's blowing. <laughs> I think, right? <laughs> no, 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 it's good. Back it off a little bit. Something happened. The siesta ended. I don't know. <laughs> wow. All right, we're done. I'm just going to just take one more look here, and that's it. That little piece right there. Uh, All right, that's it. Only if there is truth in the Awesome. Beautiful. Done. Right, See, done folks, you. you take a suffering from a herniation that nobody will touch, no doctor will fix, and the only treatment available before this Duke laser disc repair was a costotransversectomy or a what's called a lateral extracavitary approach or a transthoracic, which won't work because the disc herniation is not in the right place for that. Huh? Oh God, that's craziness. 10% of the people die from that surgery. But this surgery, simple, straightforward, outpatient, she'll be going home in an hour. It's wonderful. Great job today, team. Very impressed. You guys are awesome. Five surgeries banged out in one day. Five happy patients. Any questions? No current questions. All right. So I don't know why we don't have questions anymore. Or maybe the stream is not going through. No, the stream is going through. It's just the uh, end of the day. Uh, we actually have we actually have a lot of people watching right now. All right, fantastic. Well, if there's no questions, we will uh, end the broadcast. Thanks for watching.